All right, we're gonna be uh, shooting a little video on how to ad properly adjust a clutch cable on BCS and Grillo walk behind tractors. This is a question we get asked a lot on the phone, so we figured it was time to just shoot a video and try to answer everybody's questions. So, what we've got here today, it's a BCS 853, which is our best-selling tractor. Um, this is our shop demo model, so it's obviously not a brand new showroom thing. <coughs> Here's the clutch lever right here, as you know from using your machine probably. Now, the BCS has a clutch lever that interfaces with the operator presence control so that when you squeeze the clutch lever, it will hold this lever down in order to start the machine. And you can engage the little clutch latch on the bottom here to hold that up in the squeeze position during starting of the unit or walking away from it while it's running. Uh, it should be noted that this clutch latch is not intended to substitute as a neutral. If you're going to be away from the machine for any length of time uh, and leave the machine running, take the machine out of gear using the gear shift. Use the neutral positions on the gear shift and the PTO selector. Don't consider this a neutral. This is a temporary neutral, just so you can walk away for a few seconds. So, regardless of that, we're talking about clutch cable adjustment. Clutch cable adjustment um, should be defined by a couple criteria. The one number one criteria is that when you squeeze the clutch completely up against the handlebar, the machine comes to a 99 to 100% stop. <clears throat> that is no creeping on, no grinding of gears when shifting and so forth. Number two criteria is that when you release the clutch away from the handle so that the machine can be in motion, there should be some slack in the clutch cable. Slack can be measured in a couple ways. You can measure it right here. This is slack. This is slack. I can move the sheath in and out of the adjustment bolt. Um, but the fact is if there's slack in the cable, then it's safe to run the machine with full load on it. If you adjust the cable too tightly, for example, and this is the adjustment bolt, I'm now loosening the adjustment nut this is the, uh, the jam nut that holds the adjustment bolt in place. By backing this screw out away from the clutch handle, I am tightening the cable. I am removing slack from the cable. Now there is no slack. I can pull forward and back on this. It's taut, bowstring taut. If I run the clutch, or if I run the tractor with the clutch adjusted like this, too tight, no slack whatsoever, I will burn the clutch up because this is the equivalent of riding a truck or car with your foot on the clutch pedal. It's going to keep the clutch plates from fully mating. So you don't want to do that. You've got to have some slack in the cable. This is good. This is good. Now, if you have not, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, if you've got too much slack in the cable, for example, if we run this adjustment bolt way in, That's a lot of slack. That's a lot of slack. Now what may happen is when I squeeze the clutch, the machine does not come to a complete stop. That's unacceptable because you're gonna be grinding gears and uh, you know the machine is gonna travel even when you want it to stop, which is unsafe. So you, the middle distance is something that you're trying to strive for here. The distance from the point of the end of the clutch lever up to the handlebar, uh, when in resistance is encountered in the squeeze should be about say four to five inches and not more than that. Now, if you run out of a clutch adjustment here, if you get all the way out to the end of this bolt for example and you still need more adjustment, then you can go to the bottom of the clutch cable down by the engine and you can reset the cable there. The camera can follow me over here. This, on the current model BCS tractors has got this blue thing on there or there's a battery right here if it's an electric start. The older model BCS tractors didn't have this stuff and it was actually easier to adjust the clutches uh, if you had to adjust the cable down here. The clutch cable is this cable here running down from the handlebars. It goes underneath this, this brace, goes around a pulley on these newer model machines and then comes back through the brace to terminate right here you can see the end of the cable and there's actually a cable clamp down under here in all this garbage that's uh, collected here from mowing 
Now getting under here, you can use a, a quarter inch drive ratchet with a 5 16 or eight millimeter socket, either work fine and a little bit of an extension. And you can get right under here to the cable clamp. You don't need to take this whole bracket off. You can reach right under here. You can stabilize the end of the cable by holding against it and you can loosen the cable clamp, slide a little cable uh, through the clamp one direction or the other, depending on if you need more slack or you need more tension, retighten it here and then go back up on the handlebar to do your fine adjustment. The adjustment at the bottom is just a very coarse adjustment because that, that cable clamp is going to slide a long way once you break it loose. It's hard to get a fine adjustment on it. It's going to slide a half inch or so before you can tighten it back down again. So you don't want to try to attempt a, a fine adjustment here. You always do your fine adjustment with the adjustment screw. And the adjustment screw on any current model BCS tractor that's been produced for 20 years, the adjustment screw is going to be up here. Some of the earlier BCS tractors actually have the adjustment screw located in this region over here, kind of right behind the clutch itself. Um, so if you're looking, working on an older model BCS tractor, you can't find the clutch adjustment screw here. You can go to the bottom and look for it there, but there's always going to be a screw. So <clears throat> now on the Grillo tractors, I've got a Grillo here behind me. The Grillo tractors have a little bit different interlocking system to hold the uh, safety switch down. They have a trigger built into the clutch handle. When the trigger is not squeezed, the trigger can latch the clutch in the squeezed position. That is, if I squeeze the handle like it is now with me not squeezing the trigger, the trigger will jump out and actually lock it in the squeezed position. To release the clutch, I would take the tension off of the handle, depress the trigger, and then it releases. If you're squeezing the clutch, quickly to just say shift gears or engage the PTO, you simply engage the whole handle. That is, you pull the trigger at the same time. And as long as the trigger is depressed, it's not going to lock itself. It's only when you relax your finger off the trigger that it does lock. So that's nice because it's kind of a one-handed deal. You don't have to swing the other hand over here like you do on the BCS. But the clutch parameters are the same. You want some slack in the cable, and you want it to stop when fully depressed. Now, of course, I'm not gonna know if it's gonna stop until I start up the machine and do an acid test here, but I know this is correctly adjusted because I just ran it a minute ago. Now, let's go back over here to the BCS. One important thing that most people don't realize about cables on these machines is that the cable tensions of all the various control cables that these things have change when you turn the handlebars around. Because as it is right now, these cables, uh, that is with the handlebars in the front PTO mode, power takeoff on the front, uh, all these cables are making an extra 180 degree bend. When I turn these handlebars back around to the soil working or rear PTO mode, whoops, wrong direction, the cables are more straight and that actually relieves a little bit of tension in the cable. When the sheathing, when the outer sheathing of the cable flexes, it actually uses up space in the cable. So if I adjust my clutch, for example, to be correct with the handlebars adjusted in this mode, so it's, you know, I've got the proper amount of tension to make it come to a full stop. And then I turn my handlebars around because I've decided I'm gonna mow today or I'm gonna run a chipper shredder or whatever it is the cable is going to get tighter when I get in this direction. And now it actually could be too tight. If I was on the tighter side of the adjustment with the handlebars on that side, turning it around could actually use up, up to say a half an inch of slack in the cable. And this thing might be bowstring taut now, which means the clutch won't function properly. It'll actually slip when you put it under full load. So I would have to release some cable tension by running this bolt back in. So keep that in mind when turning your handlebars around. You want to you want to achieve a clutch adjustment that is kind of a, a good middle of the road position for both handlebar positions. Uh, otherwise, there's not a problem with keeping a 13 millimeter wrench in your back pocket. There's actually one that comes with every new tractor and with the owner's manual. And I personally, when I'm using my BCS, keep that wrench in my pocket for quick adjustments on the cables. You can adjust any of the control cables with a 13 millimeter wrench to loosen the jam nut, and then you just dial out the adjustment bolt by hand. 
So you can always customize the cable adjustments for the handlebar position that you're in now, especially if you have smaller hands and you don't want to reach a long distance to reach the control lever. You want to keep those control levers as close to the handlebar as possible. So that concludes our segment on adjusting clutches. Good luck.